Hello and welcome to Art 50 in a video series on ID's Blender 2.7. In this very quick video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a target to your camera in your 3D world. Now what does that mean? Well, if you're familiar with other 3D programs like 3D Studio Max or Maya, you'll know that when you add a camera in a scene, one of those programs, you can actually have it have a target um, as one of its options. What that means is that you can have a second object besides just your camera that your camera will always be pointed at and that's really good for things like when you want to maybe have a scene in your animation where you're looking through the eyes of a certain character and then you can animate the camera looking around at different objects. Well, to make that happen, you don't just necessarily want to animate the camera. Of course, I can move the camera around any way I want. I can rotate it as well. But a better way of doing that sort of setup is if you had a second object out in your scene that you could animate moving around your scene so that your camera is always pointing at that object and that's how you could animate that object. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. Let's go ahead and jump in. What I'll do is I'll select my default cube. I don't need it, so I'll press X on my keyboard with it selected and get rid of it. Instead of the cube, for the second object for the camera to be pointing at, in other words, for the camera's target, I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a empty. If you're not familiar with what an empty is, it's basically a dummy object. It looks kind of like a cross or like arrows. Uh, you'll see what it looks like. So empty and plain axis. Of course, add is shift A on your keyboard or the add menu. That is an empty. I'll press A to deselect it. It's basically a cross that does not show up when you actually render your final animation, but it's in your scene for you to use in circumstances like this. Let's go ahead and select that empty, so I'll right click on it. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and select my camera. The next step here is to use a keyboard shortcut to use these two objects to make the camera constrained to the empty. Now that process, what I just did is I selected the empty, I held shift, I selected the camera. That's actually a little bit backwards for me. If you're used to using constraints for bones, like an armature setup like I've gone through in several videos in this series before, you'll know that when you add a constraint to something like a bone, normally you select that object last. You select its helper objects first, you hold shift, you select that object last. Well, this is the opposite. You select the camera first and then you hold shift, select the empty second, and then we'll press and here's the keyboard shortcut for you, Control T on your keyboard. Control T brings up the Make Track, that's what the T stands for, um, menu. And I'm going to use the um, Track to Constraint option. So Control T, uh, Track to Constraint, you select the camera first and hold Shift and select the empty second. So Control T, Track to Constraint. And as you can see, we have a blue dash line. If you're looking at this video in 1080p or high def, you'll see that and the camera did just shift a little bit. Let's go ahead and look through our camera. So I'll press zero on my numpad, or of course go down to the view menu and go to cameras and active camera. There is only one camera in the scene. And what I'll actually do here is I'll grab this top little cross hatch area, divide the window into two, and then up here I'll press zero on my numpad to get out of camera view. So now I can see what the camera sees and see the scene um, just from any random user perspective view. So what I'll do here is I'll grab that um, uh, axis, or the empty rather, and I'll press G on my keyboard. And as you can see, you'll actually see it up here, the camera's moving, and we can see the camera's keeping steady looking at that object down there. So I'm moving the empty around, and the camera's following, and that's pretty much it. Of course, what you could do, and what I'll do here is I'll actually uh, get rid of this empty, so I'll press X on my keyboard. Um, I want to show you what this setup looks like without actually having to press Control T, if you want to do this manually. I'll select my camera, and as you can see that blue line is still there, or the blue dash line is still there. What that actually is, is over here in the Properties window with the camera selected, is the Constraints tab in this Properties window. There is now a Track 2 uh, constraint, that's what this is here, on the camera. Now right now it doesn't have a target because I just deleted this, the empty. So what I'll do now is I'll delete the constraint so that we'll have to do this from scratch again. I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'll add a new plane axis. Actually, this time I'll add an arrows for no reason. Now we can actually see what axis we're working with. It doesn't matter in this case. So to add that same constraint manually, instead of using the double select and control T, I'm going to set the camera. Yes, we are adding the constraint to the camera. I'll go to my properties window, go to the little link or constraints tab, and I'm going to be adding a track to, it's under the tracking um, heading track to constraint. Now when you do this, 
it doesn't know what the second object is yet. So you have to click on target and I'll select my empty, which is of course the only empty in my scene. And it's not quite that easy. There's a couple more clicks we have to do because as you can see, my camera up here is now pointing not at all in the right direction, although we have that little dash blue line. So how do we fix this? Well, the orientation that you just have to sort of memorize for this is the target has to be two, that's negative Z. You have to click on negative Z. And that looks like it might work. Let's go ahead and select the empty and move it. Nope, there's one more thing we have to do. Let's set the camera and we have to define what up is. Now, Z looks right. Z in your world, if you look down here, is up. Well, in this case, I don't know why, Maybe somebody else can understand this or explain this in the comment section below. You have to change up to Y, and you'll see the camera shift just a little bit there. So now, with negative Z and Y, if I grab the empty and press G, it works just like it did before. So that's how you do it manually, or Control T is the way you can do it very quickly. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.